Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams. And this time last year, I actually made predictions for the rankings, the top 10 rankings for the women on the WTA. And I wanted to have a look at them and see together if I got any of them right, how close my predictions were. I know I definitely got some really, really wrong ones, but let's go have a look at who I predicted for the top 10 for 2021 by the end of this season. So let's get on with the predictions. I think the number 10 in the world for the end of the 2021 season is going to be Alina Svetolina. So I think she stays in the top 10 in 2021, but I think she will drop down five spots because she's currently ranked five in the world. So I think she's going to drop. She does have the semifinals of Indian Wells 2019 protected. So she, because remember that event's being canceled or being postponed. She does have some points she can gain in Madrid and Miami, which are huge events on the WTA. But the problem is with Svetolina, she has to defend semifinals of Wimbledon, semifinals of the US Open, and the WTA finals final that she made in 2019. All of those events she had good results in 2019. So she has to defend a lot of points from about June or July onwards. So Svetolina at number 10, that's not the worst prediction. I did predict she was going to drop down from 5 to 10. She actually dropped down to 15 because she failed to make the WTA finals and she lost a lot of points there from making the final there two years ago. Also didn't do great at the slams. Only made a quarterfinal at the US Open at the end of the season. Didn't get the big points that she needed and also the events that she had to play well at and recover the points she didn't. So lost a lot of points there in the middle of the season. Uh, kind of regained them at the end and then of course dropped the WTA finals. So dropped out of the top 10, but I'm pretty happy with that prediction. Okay, going on to the number nine player by the end of 2021, I think it's going to be Bianca Andreescu. So she didn't play at all in 2020. We haven't seen her play since she got that knee injury back at the end of the year in 2019 at the WTA Finals. She's lucky because she can keep the points that she got from Indian Wells in 2019, so she's protected with those. And she does have some points she can gain at the Australian Open in Madrid, Rome, Roland Garros, and Wimbledon because she didn't do very well at some of those events, and others, she didn't even play. Okay, so not the best prediction in the world. She actually dropped out to 46 in the world. Didn't do what I thought that she would do. Didn't get to those, you know, those heights of making uh, a good run at Wimbledon. She lost in the first round there. Uh, lost early at the Australian Open. She'd make the fourth round of the US Open, but that was not nearly enough to cover the points that she'd won two years ago. So not my best prediction. I was injured throughout as well. Got to the Miami final at the start of the year. It was very promising. Um, also didn't perform great at Whitney and Wells, which she lost a lot of points at. So lost a lot of points at the tournaments that she'd won two years ago. And of course, didn't gain any points at the tournaments that she'd uh, played poorly at in the past. So not a great year for Andrescu. Okay, let's get to the number eight person in the world. The number eight spot by the end of the 2021 season will be... So I've gone with Muguruza, who is currently ranked 15 in the world. I think she is going to go up seven spots and reach the top 10 again. She was a former world number one, of course. She's a couple of Grand Slams titles under her belt. She has the 2020 Australian Open final protected points. So that's why I'm picking her to really make a rise because she has those points already protected. And she has a lot of points that she can gain in tournaments like Miami, Madrid, Wimbledon, Cincinnati, Canada, Wuhan, and the China Open, which she didn't do too well in 2019 slash 2020. So not a bad prediction there. Muguruza back in the top 10. She got back in the top 10. She actually finished number three in the world after winning the WTA finals. So I'm pretty happy with that one. I'll take that one as a win. Uh, only put her at number eight at the start of the year. Should have put her a lot higher. She made the fourth round of the US Open and the Australian Open. So she had some really good results there. She also won, like I said, the WTA finals and a bunch of other tournaments during the year, including a WTA 1000 event in the Middle East, which was a huge, huge points boost for her. So she played well at the tournaments that I'd hope she'd played well at, even though we didn't have the, uh, you know, we didn't have the Asian swing, but she played very well and she went a lot higher than I predicted. All right, so let's get straight into the number seven in the world by the end of the 2021 season. I think it's going to be Serena. I think she's going to get back into the top 10. She dropped out of the top 10 at the end of 2020 because Sabalenka finished strong, but I think she's coming back. She's got the quarterfinals of the 2019 Australian Open under her belt that's going to be protected and she can also do better if she does, you know, win that tournament or get to a final. And she also has points up for grabs at Roland Garros. Miami, Cincinnati, Rome, and Madrid. So a lot of the clay court season, if Serena plays those tournaments, she's got a lot of points she can gain to push her back into the top 10. The only downside is she has to defend points at Wimbledon from 2019 and also the US Open from 2019 as well. Okay, so not my best prediction. Uh, sort of like the Andrescu prediction, just didn't do the tournaments or didn't play well at the tournaments that she had to play well at 
and dropped down to 41 in the world. So I thought she'd get back in the top 10. She obviously went further. She went backwards uh, than my prediction. Uh, but she did play well in the clay court season. You know, she did well at the French Open. She lost, I think, in the fourth round of the quarterfinals. Uh, she replicated uh, her uh, quarterfinal at the Australian Open as well. So she did well there. She did well at the start of the season, but it was the injury. As soon as she got injured at Wimbledon, she lost all her points from going from the final two years ago to losing the first round. Lost a lot of points. Didn't play a lot, any of the American season and, uh, and and the end of the season either. So we didn't see her for six months. She lost all those points as well. Unlucky for Serena. If she had played those events, would she have been in the top 10? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe she would have been just outside. Let's get to number six now. So number six might, might be a little bit of a surprise for you guys. I put Sabalenka at number six. And the reason I put her at number six is because she's coming off two titles to end 2020. She finished after the French Open. She won two titles back to back on hard court. And she always finishes strong. And she has so many points. If she does make a very good run at one of the majors, she has so many points she can make up. She has points at the US Open, Wimbledon, Miami, Madrid, Australian Open, China Open, Canada, and Roland Garros. So they're the biggest tournaments in the world. And she didn't do very well in those tournaments over the last two years. So she can get a lot of points if she does well in those events. And I think she is on the verge of a breakthrough. I think next year, she's going to finally... Breakthrough at a Grand Slam. Okay, she went a lot better than I actually predicted. I said number six. She actually finished at number two in the world and pushed towards number one in the world towards that end of the season, especially when Barty stopped playing. And I said she'd make a semifinal or a final. She actually made two semifinals at Wimbledon and at the US Open. And she did well at the Australian Open as well at the start of the year. So had a very good season, did Sabalenka. One of the best players of the season. Up there with Barty is one of the best of the season. And I put her at number six. Should have put her a lot higher. She played way better than I had predicted, but I'm going to count that as a win. Let's get to the number five now. now. Number five, again, might be a little bit of a surprise to you guys. So I've got Ash Barty at number five. Now she is the, currently the world number one. So number five, that is four spots lower than what she's currently ranked at. Now, the only reason I put her down there, even though she has the semi-final of the Australian Open from 2020, protected because it's under the revised ranking. She has to defend so many events after the Australian Open. She has to defend the French Open, of course. She has to defend the WTA Finals at the end of the year. She has to defend the Miami title. So there are a lot of points just there. The China Open, she made the final there. Wuhan and Cincinnati, she made good runs at those tournaments too. So she has a lot of points to defend. Okay, that's probably my worst prediction. Uh, the other, you know, the other ones that were pretty bad, you know, Andrescu and Serena, those ones were mainly because of injury. I just didn't think Barty could do what she did this year. And she was clearly the best player this year. She finished as world number one. Won Wimbledon. Had a great season. Replicated what she did at the Australian Open last year by making the quarterfinals. So she saved a lot of points. Actually didn't play a lot of the tournaments I mentioned there. And of course, did, lost a lot of points from not playing the WTA finals. But it didn't matter because she played so well throughout the clay court season, throughout the grass court season, and throughout the season itself. So let's get to the number four player in the predictions. And this one might be a little bit controversial. Controversial. Some people might not like this one, but I put at number four, Karolina Pliskova. Now, a lot of people uh, put a lot of confidence in Pliskova, and she lets you down every time. She always lets me down when I put faith in her, so hopefully that she does not let me down. The reason why I picked her to be number four in the world by the end of the 2021 season is because she has a new coach, Sasha Bain, who is the former coach of Naomi Osaka. He was also a former hitting partner with Serena Williams. So he is a great get as a coach for Pliskova. And I think it might just lift her to the next level. She also has protected points at the Australian Open from 2019 when she made the semifinals there. So she doesn't have to worry about doing well in Australia. She can warm up there. And then later in the year, she has points that she can make up at Madrid, the French Open, the US Open, the China Open, and also Doha. So there's a lot of points that she can take from those events. So spot on. I picked her at number four, and she actually made it to number four. Who would have guessed? So uh, Pliskova, and I said, you know, she had to do well at the majors. She made the final of Wimbledon. That's really what solidified her spot at number four. So she did have that little breakthrough. Had a very slow start to the year. I remember there was a lot of comments about my prediction list saying that Pliskova's not going to make it in the top five. She's going to drop down. So that's probably my best prediction. Prediction, and it's the one that's actually spot on. So very happy with that. She had a great season. Let's get to the number three player by the end of the 2021 season. I think the number three player is going to be Naomi Osaka. So currently Osaka is number three. So I think she's going to stay in that spot. 
She got the Australian Open title of 2019 protected, and she has some really big tournaments that she didn't do well in over the last two years. Wimbledon, the French Open, Miami, and the WTA Finals. She has a lot of points up for grabs if she does well in those events. Also, we can't count out the fact that the Olympics are being played in her home country, and no doubt she's going to play the Olympics because she's the biggest star in Japan. Well, one of the biggest stars. And you get ranking points for the Olympics. So don't count Osaka out at winning maybe a silver or gold medal at the Olympics with a bunch of ranking points coming there as well. Okay, so she definitely didn't stay in the top 10. She actually finished at number 13 in the world. And the tournaments that I hope she do well at, she did well at the Australian Open. So I did, you know, kind of pick that one. Uh, of course, a big error in uh, in that was the ranking points for the Olympics. There was no ranking points for the Olympics. Uh, they changed the rules uh, just before the season started. So no ranking points at the Olympics didn't matter anyway. She didn't do too well there. And she played very badly at the tournaments that I'd hope she do well at. And of course, she didn't play for a long time as well. She pulled out uh, for pretty much uh, only playing the Olympics and the US Open at the end of the year. So didn't play that much throughout the season. Also didn't play Wimbledon, didn't play the WTA Finals. She was on the verge of qualifying, but just didn't play enough tennis. And that's really what hurt her. Just kind of like Serena, like Andrescu. You know, if you don't play throughout the year, a lot of other players are gonna take your spot. Let's get to the number two player in the world by my predictions at the end of the 2021 season. I think the number two in the world is gonna be Sophia Kennan. So this is really based on the fact that she has the Australian Open title wrapped up already and under her belt. She doesn't have to worry about defending her Australian Open title. And she has a lot of points that she can make up because she hasn't been great over the last two seasons uh, in a lot of big tournaments. Besides the Australian Open and the French Open, there's a lot of points up for grabs. Okay, so definitely nowhere near number two in the world for uh, for Kennan. She just didn't back up that 2020 season. It was player of the year, Australian Open champion, finalist of the French Open. And that's where she lost all her points. Also, she pulled out of a lot of tournaments. She didn't play for a long time between the Australian Open and the French Open. And she didn't even play the US Open or much to the end of the season. So a reset next year. Maybe she can get back in the top 10. But yeah, Sophia Kennan, number two. She definitely couldn't back up that season that she had in 2020. Now, the world number one. Who's it going to be? There's not too many names left. And I think the world number one by the end of the 2021 season is going to be... It's going to be Simona Halep, but it's going to be a tight race. Like I said, I think Kennan might be able to get that number one ranking, but I'm going to stick with Halep. I think Halep has more experience, and that's the difference between Halep and Kennan. Simona Halep in the Australian Open of 2020 made the semi-final, so those points are protected. And also, she has some points to gain in some big events, including Cincinnati, the China Open, and the WTA Finals. Now, we know she has to defend the Wimbledon title, which is a big title to defend. It's going to be tough for her to defend the biggest title of her career, arguably. And also a couple of those other tournaments, Rome, she has to defend that as well. Okay, so not quite the world number one that I thought. Uh, I do still believe that Halep on her day is one of the best players in the world and can beat anybody on her day. But of course, the injury. The injury of the calf, that pulled her out of the French Open. She couldn't play Wimbledon. Uh, she couldn't play a lot of the season. She came back at the very end of the season and did okay, uh, winning a couple of matches, getting to a final uh, of the Transylvania Open. So she did okay. She regained some form towards the end. Played okay at the US Open, considering her ranking dropped a lot. But unfortunately, didn't get to world number one status like I thought she would. Uh, it seems to be a lot a common theme. I seem to have picked a lot of players, uh, predicted a lot of players that ended up getting injured and then dropping down. Uh, Halep being one of those. Osaka kind of being injured uh, by not playing a lot or withdrawing from a lot of tournaments. Cannon as well. Uh, of course, uh, Andrescu, Serena. We all know their injury worries. So a lot of the players I picked all seem to get injured. And I didn't give enough respect to players like Muguruza, Sabalenka, or Barty. So... It was a tough one. It's not easy to pick. Uh, I did get the Pliskova one, though, so I'll claim that one for the entire year. I got one right, so I'll go with that. But uh, let me know down in the comments below. If you did the predictions this time last year, who did you have in the top? I know a lot of you wanted Sviontek in there, and she actually finished in the uh, top 10 at the end of the season. Maybe I should have picked her instead of uh, someone like Svetolina, but... Again, let me know down in the comments below. How many did you get right? If you want to go check out my reaction to the men's top 10 predictions that I made this time last year? Go check out that video as well. I'll see you guys soon.